Hey folks, Dave here. I appreciate you stopping by and I hope everybody's well today. When you first get a laser, you uh, start thinking about all the things you can make. Uh, and a big part of that is what can you make and sell. And something that sells really good is personalized items. So I thought about cutting out the shape of a circular saw blade uh, but I didn't want to uh, grab a vector from the internet. I thought it would be uh, more useful if we could just go through the process of taking a picture and tracing it out and making our own vector and then cutting it. So that's what we're going to do. So I started with this photo here of one of my saw blades. But it's got this shine across it and the trace function picks that up so keep that in mind when you're when you're tracing all we want to do is get the the saw teeth or the blade teeth so I'm gonna delete this so what I've done to get rid of that shine was pull it into a popular slide producing program and drew a circle out and then uh, just colored it black and that covers it up. So now we can focus on the teeth. We've got all this extra space out here too that we don't need. So we're going to start by grabbing a circle, hold down shift and just draw out a circle and then we'll resize it. Uh, click your selector tool and you want to make that circle a tool and then you can start sizing it up you don't want to cover any teeth it doesn't matter if we leave some of the other background we just want to get rid of as much of it as possible so that looks pretty good with my old eyes maybe it's good so you want to click off after that then select everything right click and go down and apply mask to image click away and when you do that they're not tied together so you can click on your photo and you can still move that around and if you've wondered how people get textures into uh, lettering, that's how they do it. All right, so get it centered up. Click away. Select everything. Right click again. And then flatten image mask. Click away. And then this ties everything back together so from there we want to right click go down to trace image and you can see that Lightburn tries to uh, to capture as much as it can but you want to get this uh, this purple line out to the edge so the first thing we're going to do is fade image so click on fade image and that helps us to see the purple much better I'm gonna make this larger and hopefully that'll be that'll help some uh, so then go down to threshold and you can move it left or right and see so all the way to the right captures that original edge of the image then you can start pulling back and just keep pulling back a little bit until you only have the teeth and hopefully none of that extra little trash that's in there we got one little piece of trash it picked up over here but we'll be able to get rid of that so I think maybe I'll go back a little bit more I see some uh, garbage up top 
and maybe that got it. Okay, I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to click OK. And now we're going to click off to the side and scroll in really close to where you can see your tool line and then try to just click the line. Then you can pull out your vector. So now we're just going to select the saw blade and delete it out of the way. We'll pull this back over. Now remember you can scroll in and out with your mouse wheel. You can push down and move the entire canvas around. So this little piece of trash over here we need to get rid of. And you'd have to check your vector to make sure you don't have any. I'm sorry for that beeping. I got another computer cutting off on me. Um, so you can select and then go up top and ungroup. And you could just you could right click and ungroup here. When you do that, then select your blade, make sure it is separate from that trash. And there could be some elsewhere in the blade. So move it as far out of the way as you can. And then swipe across your original area. And you can just click the delete button. Just If you check it real good by swiping, there's another piece there. And then delete. Now you can get rid of all the trash. And we can start working with our blade so this is a seven and a quarter inch circular saw blade and this hole in the middle is 15 millimeters so we're going to grab a circle hold down shift just draw out a circle and drop it click the selector tool go up top since they're, they're both even, we drew out a uh, perfect circle. You can turn your lock on. We almost got it to 15. So make that 15. And then we need to center it up. So select your circle, shift, and select your blade, and then go up and hit the bullseye. And there you go. Then we can go up top, select it, and go up top and group this together. Then we can turn it into a cut. I didn't think it was going to do it for a second there. Now we can uh, resize this and then go get us a font. Uh, we'll go download a free font uh, that we can write something on this. So just select everything, go up top, and take your lock off. And just make it 203 millimeters. for width and height. And that is about eight inches. Okay, so let's go grab a free font. Uh, and I think I'll just write Dave's shop on it. Y'all don't have to put Dave's shop. You can put something else. So let's go to defont.com. Uh, let's click on Retro, and then All Caps, and this gives you an idea of whatever you're, you're engraving, uh, what that might look like. Uh, so just go across and change your size to large leave sort by popularity go to more options and click 100 percent free that way you don't have to worry that someone will come back and say you used their font improperly so this will be good for commercial use and then click submit and here's what we get and 
I selected this one here, Verve. So you can just, you can click download from here, or you can click on your writing, and you can see what all the letters will look like. And it looks like they don't have lowercase with this one, so they're all uppercase. And you have numbers and symbols as well. But it gives you a good idea of what it, everything will look like. So then you want to download it. And then go to your download folder. You'll get a zip file. Just right click. Extract all with whatever program you have. And then you'll get this folder. Open that. And I just went with the, uh, with the top one. There is an alternate here. Not sure what it looks like. And then one with a shadow. Uh, but whichever one you want, try that. I went with verb. And then you can just right click on it and install. Okay. And then it should be made available to Lightburn immediately. Uh, because Lightburn doesn't actually come with any fonts. It just inherits whatever is on your computer and the new ones that you install. So let's grab the text tool. And then we will go up and find that new font. I guess somewhere down near the bottom. See if we can get there quicker. And there we are. And then click here, selector tool. I'm going to do these separately. And I think we will resize that a little bit. And then there's a little dot right here that will allow you to grab it and bend it around. We can bend that a little bit. And if it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't look quite... Uh, lined up properly. If that happens, you can just go to the corner and move it around a little bit and make it look right to you. Okay, we'll get another one and put shop. Click the selector tool. You can put it where you want it, where it looks right to you. And then shift and select and then go up to vertical align and hit center and it'll just move it left or right to get in center and then do the same thing here uh, you could also we could have grouped both of these together and then like so Select one, shift, select the other, and then hit the center button. And that didn't work because I didn't group them. So I'm hitting Control Z. This is why <laughs> I always say I include the mistakes and the fixes. So now I'm going to select them like that, group them, and then select them. Shift, select the blade, and then hit center. There we go. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think we will do an engrave and a fill. I'm going to check the preview to see how long that's going to take. It says 19 minutes. That's pretty long. Uh, but I guess it's okay. It's pretty big. It's 8 inches. So we will let it go. And we're going to cut this out of five millimeter Luon plywood, which is a really good material for uh, doing your projects. I think you'll enjoy using it. And you can get it at your local hardware, and I'll put a link to where I got it at a big box hardware store just down the street here. Uh, but it's uh, it comes in two foot by four foot sheets, and it only cost about $12, $13. So it's uh, pretty economical and it's a really good material. Okay, well let's jump in the laser and set this up.
and we will get this cut out. Ah, real quick before I forget, when you engrave, be sure to select it and move it to the top. You don't want to cut first and then engrave. It'll make a mess. Okay, now we'll jump in the laser, get this set up, and cut out. Okay, folks, be right back. Okay, I believe we're ready to go. Uh, for the engraving, I would have changed the fill to an offset fill, but offset is more of a jerky motion. So when you're doing text, even if it takes a little longer, in my opinion, it's still better to use fill. So we've got a homemade square here with this locked into. I've got a video on that. We've got homemade pins, a video I just dropped today, so I'll put a link for that as well. And homemade risers to prevent flash burn. And I have a video for that as well. So I'll put a link down in the description. You can check those out. And I think you'll be glad you did. Okay, let's send the code on over and cut this out. That looks pretty nice. Clean cuts, no burns, and it's because of these flash burn risers. It just raises it up about six millimeters. Like I said, I'll put a video or a link to a video down in the description. You can check those out. Let me clean this up a little bit and we'll get a closer look at it. Okay, well here's our finished project. I think it turned out really well. Uh, so we've got a 100% free for commercial use font to do this with, and there's many more on thefont.com to choose from. Just remember to click 100% free before you hit submit. That way you can be sure that nobody's going to come back and say, hey, you used my font improperly. So if you want to give this a try, you can get a screen print of the blade photo I put up on the screen. And then just pull it into Lightburn and crop it and trace it and uh, go at it. And this would be a good item to add to the list of personalized lasered products that you're selling if you have a shop. So if you have questions doing this, just let me know and I'll get you an answer. If you have questions about anything I've got posted, uh, to include light burn or general laser questions, I'll get back to you. So I'll post links to the videos down in the description for the ones that I mentioned to include an art library so you can save this as a vector once you get it made. So uh, if you check those videos out, I think you'll be glad you did. So I really appreciate you folks taking time to watch. It does help the channel grow, and it encourages me to keep doing it. I really enjoy getting in the shop and learning about light burn and my laser. I'm still a newbie at this, uh, but I keep at it, and uh, I get questions and comments from you folks, and it helps me to learn, and it helps all the viewers to learn. So just check back often for new videos. You folks take care, and we'll see y'all next time. Thank you.